Hola, Reyes y Reinas, High Kings and Queens. I pray that today I find you getting ready to unwind in, in a bit because I know that today it is, uh, it is well, we're about five o'clock. I know there's a lot of people getting out of work. Um, there's some people going to work. However, I pray that I find you excited, full of joy, full of, um, I don't know what the word is, but I just, I, I pray that I find you like excited for the transition of the seasons because we've already transitioned. We're already in fall. Um, and I just pray that, um, that you're excited for what's to come because God always brings things. Happy birthday, queen. I, earlier I had told myself like I need to text her and I have been so busy. That's why today I'm logging in later. Um, but happy birthday. I pray that all your desires, all your heart's desires, um, come to pass abundantly as well as the needs that you don't know you need. And thank you for your time today, especially today. Thank you for your time and joining, um, today for us to grow. I'm going to open in prayer shortly. For everyone that is under the sound of my voice, I pray that the Lord delivers of exceedingly abundantly great wisdom beyond your years of age. Well, great knowledge beyond your years of age. Wisdom comes from experiences. But I pray that the Lord delivers exceedingly abundantly um, confirmation on things, uh, revelation, that you have great revelation um, for whatever it is that you may be having prayers about or you just feel like you have confusion, I pray that the Lord just speaks to you in a way that will kind of just end any confusion, end any questions, just deliver whatever it is that you need deliverance from and that they de that God delivers just a miraculous sign and wonder by today's word and that you leave wiser today forever changed. In the name of Jesus, I pray that I die to the flesh and that I speak to the power of the Holy Spirit invested into me and the power that's invested into you to have great knowledge from this teaching today. So in Jesus name, amen. <clears throat> And today we're reading from Luke 14, 6 through 10, because we started a new um, a new chapter yesterday. So um, I don't know what that was, but let me see. So we're going to open right here. So and today we're reading still on the Pharisees because we started on the Pharisees and the Sabbath day. That was yesterday how um, your haters, the Pharisees were trying to distract the lord but also just 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 cause him like always like haters are always trying to cause distraction that's the main thing that they do the pharisees were just trying to actually the lord silenced them yes silenced the pharisees yesterday so um, um let me go ahead 14 it's 6 through 10 so to this to this they could find no answer this was yesterday i read it a part of yesterday so we could get a better understanding of that scripture he told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they would choose the best places for themselves. Mm, how many of us do that? When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, don't recline at the best place because a more distinguished person than you may have been invited by your host, meaning someone more important than you. <laughs> <clears throat> The one who invited both of you may come and say to you, give your place to this man. And then in humi humiliation, you will proceed to take the lowest place. Mm. But when you are invited, go and recline in the lowest place so that when the one who invited you comes, he will say to you, friend, move up higher. You will then be honored in the presence of all the other guests. Basically, I, that's a word right there. Ooh, Lord, thank you. I will tell you um, the other day, because I serviced a wedding um, this Saturday, uh, it's wedding season's here. And um, I, I, every time like I service a wedding, when I'm done servicing, you know, or I have a break in between waiting for each bridal par pri party to sit, you know, where I'm at or whatever, um, I never want to sit down. Because I just feel like I'm working, you know, I'm working. And I always want their seats to be offered to the bridal party because they just hired me to do um, to do the beauty, right? To just do the hair, the makeup, whatever. And when I see <laughs> when I see that there's like people sitting down or lounging, I'm just like, we're just here to work. We're here. To, I don't say work. I say beautify. And uh, this is what that reminds me of. It's like you're there to beautify, but then you take up the chairs because I have been at wedding parties where there's been other, you know, stylists or people that go and they sit on the chairs and then there's like nowhere for the bridal party to sit down. And I'm just kind of like, um, that's the bridal party. Like it's their day. It's the bride's day. And and this is what that reminds me of is like when you go somewhere, you know, we may have confidence or confidence, right? But I truly believe that when we go somewhere like me, I always offer my chairs. I'm not bragging, but I just always feel like 
I have to serve. I have to serve in some area, shape or form. And if it's standing in a place or going to a place where I'm going to sit down, I always choose to sit like in the back area, even at church. Um, I always sit in the back area. And the reason why I do that is because I just feel like, I don't know, like I just feel like other people, I always want other people to have the best. And here, this is confirmation for me that that's how the Lord wants us to live. He always wants us to live, like not live in the lowest place, but be not content where you like stay there forever. But when you go into a place or wherever it is you go, go in with like humiliate, you know, humility, not humiliation. Because if you go in with a big head or you go in with, we're like, oh, I'm gonna go to a wedding. I'm gonna sit on the bridal chair. Like, come on, they're gonna move you. And this is basically what he's teaching here is humility. And I love how he talks in parables and how he educates them because i truly believe that this whole series that we're learning right now in this area is um god's language and he's basically teaching them to be you know be be humble um another thing in the notes is this scene is followed by jesus teachings on humility followed by the parable of the large banquet those who were invited made excuses for not coming for some people that don't come i know how many of y'all know people that make excuses you know they don't ever come to anything that you hold but then when you don't invite them invite them they're like why didn't you invite me well you never come <laughs> um what it says here is there for those who gathered at his great table were the most unlikely the poor maimed blind and lame humiliation is often the result of a lack of humility which is essential for entering God's kingdom, period, mic drop. So basically everything that he was teaching in this scripture, um, in this um, chapter, or well, this small piece of the chapter, um, is for you to put yourself in low places. Because wherever it is that you go with humility, the Lord will bless you and he will bring honor to you. Without you having to bring honor to yourself, don't toot your own horn, or basically is what I got from this. What my grandmother wrote um, is, humbleness is what God wants of us. It is better to be humble than proud. Amen. Thank you, Grandma. So we are to pray for God to rebuke social pride in us. Ooh, word. We are to recognize our lowliness and unworthiness and rely safely on his mercy. Amen. So you know that everything that you have is by his mercy, his grace, his kindness, his favor. It's not by you coming out there and just making it happen. You are alive. Your heart is beating. You have air in your lungs because God granted you life today. You have a nice car. You have finances. You have food on the table because the Lord has provided ways for you to attain these things. And he's called us to multiply in these things, multiply in finances, multiply in wealth, multiply in, um, grace multiplying kindness generosity multiply in stature wisdom knowledge studying his word um that's another video but her prayer is lord help us to be humble to be what you want us to be <clears throat> well it says being proud you be i don't know what this word is forgive me Oh, being proud, you will see us from far away. Mm, he won't be near us when we're proud because we're full of pride. We're not full of him. But if we are humble, you will see us face to face. Oh, Grandma, this is so good. So good. Thank you, Grandma. And her application that she put for today's devotion is to be humble, to remain humble. If you're not humble, humble yourself because if not, you will be humbled. I would tell you, I was, it's crazy that we're talking about this because today I was talking to my daughter and I told my daughter, when I like, I feel this, and this is what I've learned along my journey is that when someone does you wrong and you feel that you want to get them back, you want to revenge, you're basically playing God in their life or playing God in your life because God is the one that says, I, I'm the one that has revenge. I, I take revenge. I, everything is him. Whatever someone does wrong to you, leave it to him. He will handle them. It's not for you to do it. And that's what I was just telling my daughter. I was like, it's so crazy because like I have a really hard time like being mean to people. Like even if they do me dirty, like I just want to do what God has called me to do. If they need to be served, I will serve them. Um, and if I don't say nothing nice, I really have learned and learning to not say nothing at all. Because I've learned that when you have been humbled, I have been in a place where I seriously, I didn't even want to live. Because I just felt like it was a hard, hard, hard time in my life. And it's just, I didn't want to face another day. So I'm thankful for that now because I realized that through that, it has chastened me to never want to be, to cause heartbreak to anybody else, to cause pain to anybody else. And if I do by something I say, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but if I do by something I say or something, I, I want to make it right quick. 
I, I have conviction, you know, very quickly. Um, and I just want to make things right because I truly believe that when you're an ambassador for Christ, you know, people may do you dirty and you may get treated like poorly more than another person. But I will tell you that it's all happening for a reason. It's all sharpening you. So therefore you can handle the greater of what God's bringing to your life. And if you want to play God and take revenge, then God can't trust you with certain things. Like the other day I was seriously driving and I was just thinking like how the Lord has constantly sent me people that um, I have had like things with them where they had hurt me or experiences or trauma or something that they had hurt me but it's like somehow they were always brought back into my life and i'm just like and i and i and i was like oh, i remember when this person did this but then like they're here in my life and i'm like well that's god you know that's god you know and i treat them with love respect and kindness like and i forget like my husband told me you forget a lot of things like that you know people have done to you and i'm like i would rather live with forgetting those things because if i remember if they did me dirty then i, I don't want to take matters into my own hands i would rather just let it be like it's the first time me meeting them if that makes sense um but i pray that you use that in your life that you do not be try to be god and try to take revenge into your own hands because i would tell you that it's not for us to to do revenge to people or what they've done to us for us to take into it and judge and, and be like okay well I don't, i'm gonna do this to them no it's that's not our job leave that job to god because i would tell you that you will still end up hurting yourself anything that you say to hurt others you end up hurting yourself because i would tell you how you feel right now and seriously like there has been times like i remember like okay facts one time i had like really like thought about this person that had i mean they had hurt me to where i just i felt so much trauma heartache like i didn't think i was gonna be able to bounce back from what had happened and i remember like thinking in my mind i was like god i don't even care if that person were to live and i remember thinking right and <clears throat> i was like lord like fix me like that's not cool <laughs> that's not even like okay um and i'm just being vulnerable right now because maybe it's just me maybe nobody thinks like that um but this was a while back and i remember like later on and like later on time had passed and i remember i was like lord like thank you for not ever listening to me when i'm angry because like two weeks later a year later you may not even think about that person that hurt you or caused you pain because i'm telling you things happen in your life and sometimes you're living with so many good memories that the bad ones they're just kind of like the lord just kind of heals you from them and you're just like oh pobrecitos if they hurt me like that because you know hurt people hurt other people and if they hurt me in that area so bad i can't even imagine what they do for themselves you know or how they treat themselves because how you treat others is a pure reflection of how you see yourself Mm, in jesus name thank you for that word so i pray that um you take this word today especially what my grandmother wrote um about the application is uh to always remain humble always serve with humility um you seriously will not live a successful life if you do not serve successfully if you don't serve successfully eventually whatever it is that you have uh created or attained or you know received you're not going to multiply because if you feel you're not generous you're just going to hoard it all and therefore the the one that pours out which is god you know, you may be successful for years or whatever, but it's not going to, I would tell you, it will not pass on to generations that come. So in Jesus name, I pray that you're blessed and I thank you for your time today and happy birthday to Ruby. Any graphics or any arts or anything that you need created, please go to her page. It's her birthday today. Um, and I'm praying for each and every one of you that um, we remain, we, we remain with great humility and live with a great humbleness and gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. And if something bad is happening in your life right now, I pray that you recognize that it could be worse. It could be worse. That's what always saves me, makes me feel better. Is like things could be worse. You think you're going through a very, very hard time in your life right now. And then like, you know, you just talk with people about what you're going through and then people bring up things. It's like, God, like there's out there people going worse. And I always, when I see something or I just see something that breaks my heart, I just like seriously lift them up in prayer. It could be someone that did you do me dirty in the past or did someone else dirty. I'm just like, God bless them because I don't know what's going through their mind. I don't know what they're thinking. And um, remember what you think, what you put in here is what you will believe that you are. So if people are treating you like, seriously crap can you imagine what their mentality is about themselves what is he goes pray for them so and she's gonna be blessed i'll see y'all tomorrow today i am wearing this sarah lash i'm really feeling the sarah lash it's just so extremely lightweight 
and it just looks so natural and when i don't feel like doing so so much makeup um i just throw this lash on i love it i can't even throw it on without makeup maybe i'll come up one day without makeup because it just it just looks so natural and beautiful and this is the nine dollar lash for this month from the lord nesme beauty holy lashes for any makeup services hair services um i do do that and it's on lord nesme beauty salon page and the lashes of course um they're in the lord nesme beauty uh lashes uh the first and only uh mink holy lash what is holy lash it's consecrated dedicated to god to give god glory and the women in the bible they're all named after uh the, the seven of them are named after women in the bible so therefore um you could be educated because each lash you buy has a scripture in the back of the lash about um the woman that the the lash is named after so i love y'all so much god bless y'all abundantly and thank you for your time today today was a really good word i pray that it blessed you and that you leave forever changed and know that this too shall pass god is at work exactly where you're at See y'all tomorrow. Bye.